Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language. So in this video I will be programming a Monty Hall problem simulation using Python. Now the Monty Hall problem is a famous problem in conditional probability that is based on the American television game show called Let's Make a Deal and named after the original host Monty Hall. So in this problem you're on a game show and you are given a choice between three doors. Behind one door is the prize you want, let's say a car, and behind the other two doors are goats, the prizes that you don't want. You choose a door, let's say door number zero, then the host Monty will open an another door, which he knows contains a goat, let's say door number two, and then he asks you, do you want to switch your original choice and pick door number one? The question is, is it to your advantage to switch your original choice? Well, the answer is yes, it's better to switch, although surprisingly most people stick with their original choice and claim there is no need to switch because you would have a 50% chance of guessing correctly the door that contains the prize between the two unopened doors that are left. But by switching, you are actually given about an extra 33.33% chance of winning, effectively doubling your chances of winning from about 33.33% from your original choice to about 66.66% by switching doors. So, again, in this video, I will simulate this game and then graph the winning probabilities to show empirical evidence that it is indeed to your advantage to switch doors. All right, so I'm on Google's website. It's called colab.research.google.com, and I'm on it because it makes it really easy to start programming in Python. All you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So if you are not already a subscriber to this channel, then hit that subscribe button and please hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps out the channel and let's start writing this program. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is click on file and then click on new notebook and a new tab open up for you and then eventually a new cell open up for you. Now in this cell, I'm gonna put in some comments, a description about the program. So I'm gonna put, this is a Monty Hall simulation. And let's go ahead and create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left. And in this cell, I'm going to import the libraries that I plan on using throughout the program. So I'm going to import random and I'm going to import mat, matplotlib.pyplot as plt and then I'm going to give the plot a style. So I'm going to type plt.style.use and I'm going to use the 538 style and then I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left and it's going to tell me if I made any errors and it looks like I'm good to go. So let's go ahead and create a new cell here. And in this cell, I'm gonna create a function for the host to reveal a door that doesn't contain the prize. So let me go ahead and put that here. Create a function for the host to reveal a door that doesn't contain the prize. And of course, the host cannot reveal a door that the contestant or player chose as well. All right, okay. So just remember that the, the host knows the door that the prize is in. All right, so let's go ahead and create that function. I'm gonna call it get underscore non underscore prize underscore door. And it's gonna take in the host. So this will be the door that contains the prize. It's gonna take in the number of doors and it's gonna take in the player or contestant's choice. All right. So that's all the information I need to return a door that doesn't contain the prize and a door that isn't the contestant's original choice. And I probably should put that in the comments here, so I will. And a door that isn't the contestant's slash player's original choice. Okay, and let's bring that down just a little bit. Okay. So let's go ahead and create this function. I'm going to create a variable called i and I'm going to set it equal to one. And while i equals the host or i equals the player choice, we're going to set i equal to, let's see, i will be equal to i plus one. And then I'm going to mod it by the number of doors okay and then I'm going to return I okay so now this will give me the or give me a door that does not contain the prize and a door that isn't the contestants original choice all right so let's go ahead and run this that looks good let's create a new cell 
And now in this cell, I'm going to create a function to have the player switch to the other unopened door. All right, so let's go ahead and create that function. I'm gonna call it switch underscore function. And it's gonna take in a shown door. So this will be the door that the host shows the contestant, which does not contain the prize. It's gonna take in the number of doors. And it's gonna take in the player choice. All right. And it's gonna be very, very similar to our other functions. So I'm just going to highlight all of this, copy it using control C and then come back down here and paste it using control V. And then I'm gonna change host here to shown underscore door. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run this function. It looks good, let's create a new cell here. And in this cell, I want to create a function to simulate the game. So I'm gonna call this function Monty Hall game. And it's going to take in a parameter called switch, which will let us know if the player or contestant chooses to switch. And then it's gonna take in the number of tests. All right, so that looks really, really good. What I want to do is I want to get a few, I wanna get the number of wins and the number of losses when they switch and when they don't switch or when the contestant switches or when the contestant doesn't switch. So I'm gonna create a few variables. One I'll call win underscore switch underscore count. And I'm gonna set it equal to zero. So this is the, this variable will count the number of times the player or contestant won from switching. Then I'll create another variable. I'll call it win no switch count. So this will contain the count of the number of times the player or contestant won from not switching. And then I will create a variable called lose underscore switch count or CNT. And I'll set, equal, set that equal to zero. So this is the number of times the player or contestant lost from switching. And then I'm gonna create another variable called lose underscore no switch underscore count or CNT. And I'm gonna set this equal to zero. And this will count the number of times the player or contestant lost from not switching. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and create our doors. So doors will be equal to zero, one, and two. So it's a list that contains the number zero, one, and two for door number zero, door number one, and door number two. And then we're gonna get the number of doors. So num doors will be the length of doors. And I think that's it. All right, so now let's go ahead and loop through, let's loop through the number of times the contestant or player can play the game. Okay, so for I in range, zero to the number of tests, we want to put the prize behind a door randomly. So I'm gonna create a variable called door with prize. And I'm gonna set it equal to random dot rand it. And this will help me choose a random number from zero to the number of doors minus one. So this will contain, this will, this will randomly choose choose a door between zero and two. Okay, so now we have that, the door with the prize. Let's let the, let's let the host know which door contains that prize. So I'm gonna create a variable called host and set it equal to door with 
surprise. Okay. All right, so now the player needs to initially choose a random door that she or he believes has the prize. So I'm going to create a variable called player choice. And I'm going to set it equal to random dot ran int zero to the number of doors minus one. Okay. And let's store the player's original choice in a variable. So the original choice, or I put the original player choice equals player choice. Okay. And then let's get the door that the host will show to the contestant. So I'm going to call it shown underscore door. And I'm going to set it equal to get underscore non underscore prize underscore door. And we're going to input the host, the number of doors, and the player choice. Okay, so that should do it. And that looks good. Okay. So in this case, we will see if the player will always choose the switch or not. So here I'm going to put if the player chooses to always switch then allow the player to switch their original chosen door to the other unopened door. All right, I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and create that statement. So if switch is true, then the player choice is going to be equal to switch function. And in the switch function, we're going to input the shown door. And we're going to input the number of doors. And then we're going to input the player's choice. OK. So this will switch the player's choice. All right. All right, so now if the player choice is the prize, and remember the host knows what door that is, so I'm just going to put is equal to host, but also equivalently I could put door with prize. And maybe I will put door with prize just to make it a little bit more understandable. So if the player's choice is the door with the prize and switch is false, That means that the player did not switch, and that means that the player wins. So here I'm going to put, then the player wins from not switching. And let's go ahead and print that. So I'm going to print player wins and I'm going to put no switch. And then I'm going to put the player's choice. So the player chose door number. And then I'm going to put the door number that the player chose. So player underscore choice. And then I'm going to put the original choice as well. Original door choice. And then I'm going to put original player choice here. And then I'm going to put the door with the prize, or the door that contains the prize. Maybe I should put contains. Uh, I'll put with prize. So door with prize. That's going to be the door underscore with the prize and the shown door. Okay, so that's going to be just shown underscore door. All right, that's a lot. 
Okay. So I think that that's okay. And then I want to count this. So this is when this is when the the player or contestant wins without switching. So that's the win no switch count. So win no switch count is going to be equal to win no switch count plus one. All right. Okay, so everything else is going to be very, very similar. I'm just going to make a few changes. So I'm just going to highlight all of this. And I'm going to use Control C here to copy it. And then I'm going to come down here and use Control V to paste. And instead of if here, I'm going to put else if. All right. So else if the player chose the right, the, the right door, but they chose to switch, so switch is true, then we know that the player wins from switching. And I'm going to put that in comments here. Then the player wins from switching. All right. And then we'll show all of that data, which looks good. All that's going to be the same. And now this win no switch count will be when, and they decided to switch. So that's win switch count. So I'm just going to get rid of that there. All right. And let me make sure it is called win switch count up here. Yep. Win switch count. Okay, so we're going to add one to that count. Okay, so now I'm just going to highlight all of this, copy using Control C, and then paste it down here using Control V. And now I want to know if the player did not choose the correct door and they did not choose the switch. Then this means that the player lost from not switching okay so here I'm going to put the player lost and then the player chose not to switch so I'm gonna put no switch and everything else should be good and then the count needs to change so now this player lost so I'm going to use that lose um, lose switch or lose no switch, right? Lose no switch count. And I'm going to copy this here and then we're going to add one to that count. And let me just make sure it's called, oh, it's called lose, lose no switch count. What I put here, lost. Okay, so it's lose no switch count. Okay. And then I'm going to just paste what, oh, oh, can't paste that. All right, so I need to highlight all this again, copy using control C, and then paste this statement again, and then just make a small change or a few small changes. So if the player did not choose the door with the prize and they chose to switch, so I'm gonna make that true, then that means that the player lost from switching. And so here I'm gonna put the player lost and then put but the player switch and then we're going to get the count for that. So that's lose switch count, I believe. So let's go back up here and check lose switch count. Yep. All right. Else if it's none of those scenarios, then I think I did something wrong. So I'm just going to print something is wrong. Okay, and let's return those counts. So I'm going to return. I'm going to return win underscore no switch count. I'm going to return win underscore switch count. Okay, I'm going to return lose underscore uh, switch. I'm going to do lose underscore switch no count and then I'm going to do or return lose underscore switch count. All right, and then I will also return the number of tests. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see if we get any errors. All right, surprisingly, I didn't get any errors. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. 
and in this cell I want to play the game. So I'm going to create a variable called x and I'm going to set it equal to Monty Hall game. And I want this player to switch all the time. So I'm going, I'm going to input true here. So the player is going to always switch. And then I only want to run, mm, let's do 10 games. All right, and let's run this. Okay. So now looking at this, we can see that the player lost here, the player lost here, and the player lost here. So the player lost about 3 out of 10 times from switching. And we can see that the player always chooses to switch, right? Because we put true there for switching. So all those should be switched. Let's see what the player did. So the player chose door number 2. And the original door choice was door number 0. And the door with the prize was door 0. And the shown door that the, the host showed the contestant was door number 1. All right, so here the player switched their door to be door number two. All right, and here the player switched their door to be door number two as well. Their original choice was door number one. The door with the prize was door number two. And then the shown door that the host showed the contestant was door number zero. All right, so everything looks good, except for I kind of don't like that number sign there without all the rest of them having it. So I'm just going to get rid of it. All right, and I'm gonna rerun this, and let's rerun this. Okay. All right, so here we can see, after rerunning the game again for, or 10 times, we can see that the player lost one, two, three, four, five times, right? So they won 50% of the time this time, as opposed to last time when we ran this, they won about 70% of the time. So that's really good, but what we really need is we need more or we need a bigger sample size, right? To really kind of get a good idea of that win percentage. But anyways, let's go ahead and create a new cell and let's calculate this win and loss percentage. So I'm going to get the win and loss percentage for switching or not switching depending on on what we choose all right so print let's see when switch percentage and I put a put a little colon here and a space all right so that's just going to be x at position 1 divided by the number of tests, which is x at position 4. And I'm going to do this about three more times. So I'm going to highlight this and copy it. And then I'm going to paste it about three more times. So I want to know the lose switch percentage. So that was at position, or I'm sorry, yeah, position 0, 1, 2. Um, three at position three, right? So at position zero, one, two, three, we have that lose switch count. All right, so here I'm going to put three, and then I want to know the win no switch percentage, and that was at position zero win no switch count. Yep, so that's position zero, and then of course that leaves us with. Um, lose no switch okay and that's at position two all right so if I run this now I can see that the player won in this above game won about 50% of the time and lost 50% of the time from switching okay so let's run this one more time and let's run this and I can see that the player won about 60% of the time for switching and lost about, um, I'm sorry, the player won about 60% of the time from switching and 40% of the time the, the contestant lost from switching. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And again, I need a much, much, much bigger sample size. So I'm going to, I'm going to get, well, let's think about this. Let's do this right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up here to this function and I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to copy it using control C and I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to paste it using control V and I'm going to change the function name just slightly. I'm going to put a two here and instead of me putting all these print statements for the game, I'm going to comment them out. So this will allow me to run the simulation a little bit faster without it printing things to the screen. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run this cell. And it probably doesn't like this else statement, right? So I'm going to just get rid of it. Let's run this again. Okay. So let's create a new cell. And I'll go back up here. And I'm going to just copy this. By highlighting it and using control C and come back down here and paste it using control V and instead of 10 simulated games I'm going to do 2,000 I'll put in 2,000 here okay so let's go ahead and run this all right so you know what I um, I use the original function right so that's why we're getting all these games. We've got 2,000 of them. But I want to use Monty Hall Game 2. So let's go ahead and put a 2 here instead. And let's run this. Okay, so now we don't get any of the print statements. Let's create a new cell and go back up to where we calculated the percentages. So I'm going to just highlight all of that and copy using Control C. And then come back down and paste it using Control V. And let's run this. And here we can see that the win percentage for switching is a lot closer to that 66% that we were expecting. So it's about 65.05% winning and about 34.95% losing for the contestant or player. And that's what we would expect. So let's put in 10,000 here. I'm going to run that and then let's run that percentage. And again, we can see it's still much much closer to that 66 percent that we were expecting as opposed to the 50 percent that many people think um, this problem gives you or a chance that this problem gives you okay now i want to graph this so let's go ahead and create a new cell and let's get the data to create a visualization of the number of simulated tests slash games played. And the percentage of wins from always switching. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna create a list. I'm gonna call it number of tests. And so it's going to be equal to an empty list. And then I'm going to get the win or a list of win percentages. So win percentage will be equal to an empty list. And then I'm going to create a variable called switch, which I'm going to make true all the time. And then I'm going to run, run up to 2,000 simulated games. Okay, so for I in range 1 to 2001, num tests will append the number of tests. So that's I. And then I'll create a variable called Y and set it equal to the Monty Hall game specifically the multi the Monty Hall game 2 that I created so that I'm not printing to the screen and we're going to give it the parameter to switch always and we're going to give it the number of games to play which is I and then I want to append the win percentages so win underscore percentage 
oops let's go back here so when percentage dot append y at position um, I believe it's one right so if I go back up here it's, yes it's one so y at position one divided by y at position four all right so let's go ahead and run this all right this may take a little time because a lot a lot of games okay so that's pretty quick let's go ahead and create a new cell and now in this cell we will visually show the number of tests and the win percentage from switching or I should put from always switching so just type plt dot figure and give our figure a figure size so I'm gonna set that size equal to two let's see 12 we we'll do 12 point two by four point five and then we're going to plot it so just type plt dot plot and we're going to plot the number of tests on the x-axis and then the win percentage on the y-axis and then we're going to give our x-axis a label so type plt dot x label and the label will be number of tests and I need to put that in quotes so number of tests and then I'm going to give the y-axis a label so type plt dot y label and it will be the win percentage and I'm going to go ahead and give this a title as well so type plt dot title I'm going to call it Monty Hall problem and then I want to show oh I misspelled problem and then I want to show the plot so just type plt dot show okay so let's go ahead and run this okay and now we can see visually the win percentages for always switching so we can see that it it does get closer and closer to that 66.66 percent that we are expecting as opposed to the 50 percent that many people expect this problem to produce for winnings all right but let's actually see what that number is so I'm going to just create a new cell here and in this cell I'm going to print the win percentage for test playing and I'm going to put a little colon there it is or hmm, this is what I do for test playing y4 number of games number of games is and then I put y1 divided by y4 and let's go ahead and run this okay so the win percentage for test playing 2000 number of games up for for a test playing, I was gonna put 2,000, 2,000 games. So let's run this again. The win percentage for a test playing 2,000 games is 0.6515. And you know, actually, I'm gonna put a multiplier here. Oops, a multiplier there times 100, and then I will put a percent sign. So let's go ahead and run this again okay so there we go so the win percentage for test playing 2000 games is 65.14999 percent which is a lot closer to the 66 percent that we expect as opposed to the 50 percent that many people think um, this question this problem gives so let's do one more thing I'm gonna come back up here and instead of 2000 games I'm gonna change this to 10,000 and let's run this so again this may take some time okay so that took a while but um, let's see what we get now visually okay so this looks really really good let's see what that win percentage is 
Okay, so this the win percentage in this case was 60 or about 67 percent after 10,000 games played. Okay, so again, that's still really, really close to the 66 percent that we were expecting. So thanks everyone for watching the video and a special thanks to Statra and to everyone supporting this channel on Patreon.com. If you want to support this channel on Patreon.com, I will leave a link below in the description. I hope everyone has a great day and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.